adequately and fully describe the essence of God in the Trinity. The Trinity is a difficult concept to understand through our human reason. You see, when we try to understand the Trinity through human reason, we are only left with frustration and confusion. And this is the problem that Nicodemus encounters in the Gospel today. Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night, which is significant because the author of the Gospel of John loves to play with the concepts of light and dark. For Nicodemus to come at night is to say that he is not in the light. It is to say that Nicodemus comes and although he believes he knows who Jesus is, he doesn't really know him. He does not have the faith. He is not in the light. And so in our gospel today, Nicodemus and Jesus enter into what I find to be a rather humorous discussion. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody where you just felt like you were not on the same page? You seem to be missing one another in the conversation. There's just something off. And usually there's a point where you realize this is where we were missing. Well, I was thinking about this whole missing one another in conversation, not understanding what one another is saying, and I think perhaps the best way to show this is through the famous comedy skit from Abbott and Costello of Who's On First.
Nicodemus comes to Jesus with flattering speech, saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, because no one can do these things apart from God. Nicodemus claims to know who Jesus is, and yet we see that he really doesn't. Jesus says he must be born from above. And interestingly enough, the Greek word for from above, from above is anopen, which can also mean again. So Nicodemus hears you must be born again when Jesus says you must be born from above. And here lies the confusion. It's why when Jesus says you must be born from above, Nicodemus asks, well, how can somebody enter into the womb again? It's a bit like Abbott and Costello. It's like the Bible's version of who's on first. They're not on the same page. You see, Nicodemus is trying to think rationally about what Jesus is saying to him. He's trying to understand through human reason, and as a result, he's thinking from his own individual perspective. Nicodemus is thinking too small about the world. And I think that just like Nicodemus, we sometimes have a tendency to look at the world from too small of a perspective. We are only able to understand the world from our point of view. And what Jesus is doing is shifting the viewpoint from our small individual world view to God's view of the world. A view that is much greater, that provides much more understanding of the way things are, even if it doesn't make sense to us. The reason our analogies fail to adequately describe the Trinity is because we cannot substitute our own words, our own worldview for God's word, for how God describes God's self. The only way we can comprehend the complexity of God as Trinity is through faith. Trusting that what God tells us is indeed reality, even when our perception tells us otherwise. Faith is what assures us of God's nature and essence as three persons in one God. Faith is what assures us that in the water and in the Spirit there is new life. Faith is what assures us in the hope of Christ even when the world passes. How can these things be? Faith is what assures us even when we find ourselves confused and unsure. Faith is what allows us to dwell in the mystery of who God is and who we all are. Just as there is a mystery about God, there is also a mystery about each of us as people created in the image of God. I once had a professor who said, my hope is that I would come to know each of you for who you are. My prayer is that I never will. You see, once we claim to know someone entirely and completely, we place them into a box, limiting them from ever becoming anything else than what we know them to be. We deny them the ability to become something more, something new. We deny God's work in the Spirit to move through them, bringing about change in their personhood. There always seems to be an element of mystery in people, even those that we are closest to, and perhaps that's what draws us together to one another. We are intrigued by the mystery that each of us has. This mystery allows us to learn more about one another, to be surprised by something new taking place in our neighbor's lives. 
It allows us to learn from each other and to grow with each other. The mystery allows the spirit to move, creating something completely new and different. So perhaps when we talk about the Trinity, much like people, it isn't something to be solved or figured out. Perhaps it isn't to be understood entirely. Perhaps we are called to simply have faith and trust that this is indeed who God is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Perhaps we are to rest in that faith. Perhaps the way that we understand the Trinity and who God is is best summed up in one thing in the most famous Bible verse in all of Scripture that God as Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, so loved the world that He graciously gave His one and only Son. And whoever believes in Him be born of water and spirit will not perish, but will have 